Well, good morning. What a different atmosphere it is today in the church, but uh, we're glad that you can be watching us today. And uh, we are continuing in our series, and it's amazing. Our series has been the enemy. And already a month ago, as we prepared for this week to come, our sermon was going to be titled, The Enemy He Hinders Prayer. And today, as we get ready to uh, have our day of prayer, the president's asked us to do that. And before he asked us to do it, the church had already decided, along with our Southern Baptist Convention, to have a time of prayer um, that we would talk on prayer, that we would talk about what's going on and how that the enemy hinders prayer. If you have your Bibles and you can get to them, we're going to be in Daniel chapter 10 today. And uh, when we start talking about Daniel, most of the time we think about one main story, Daniel in the lion's den. We think about how he trusted God and how that God was able to uh, protect him and how that he went through that lion's den without any kind of problems. But Daniel chapter 10, verse number one, it says this, in the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, a thing was revealed unto Daniel, whose name was called Belteshazzar. And the thing was true, and the time appointed was long, and he understood the thing and had an understanding of the vision. When we start off this passage today, we find Daniel, and he had a vision, and it was a scary vision. It was a long vision. It was something that he didn't fully grasp. And yet his heart was, he wanted to know more about it. And so he started praying. He started thinking about what God wanted for him. If we read in verse 2, it says, In those days I, Daniel, was mourning for three full weeks, and I ate no pleasant bread, and neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, and neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. And in the fourth and twentieth day of the first month, as I was by the side of the great river, which is Hedekal, then I lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz. For 21 days, Daniel says, I prayed. For 21 days, I mourned. For 21 days, I questioned and I wondered. You know, when we start talking about prayer, so many times we forget that sometimes prayer isn't automatically answered. Sometimes we get going and we say, today's a day of prayer, and we figure everybody's going to pray today, and so by the end of the day, we're going to have an answer. And yet we find Daniel here, who's one of God's prophets, who's somebody that saw God do wondrous things in his life, and yet 21 days later is when he's getting the answer to his prayer. What happens when we don't get the prayer as fast as we want answered? What happens when we don't get the prayer answered the way we want? We quit praying. But what we find here is that Daniel is for three weeks praying. For three weeks, he's not taking any excesses. He's not doing anything but really mourning and thanking God and asking God to do something in his lies. And then all of a sudden, on that 21th day, verse number five said, I lifted up my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen, whose loins were girded with fine gold of Euphaz, and his body was like the barrel, and his face as the appearance of lightning." and his eyes as lamps of fire, and his arms and his feet in the color of polished brass, and the voice of his words like the voice of a multitude. Wow. We start reading about this person that shows up, and he, he seems familiar to me. He seems like somebody that maybe we've seen before, somebody that we've read about in the book of Revelation. You know where I'm going with this? We talked about it last week. We had that big word, Christophany, the pre-incarnate Christ. And Daniel, at his lowest, with 21 days of waiting for God to answer prayer, with 21 days of not hearing what God would say to him, all of a sudden looks up and there, it appears to be Jesus Christ, the pre-incarnate Christ there. And Daniel, verse number 7 says, And I, Daniel, alone saw this vision. For the men that were with me saw not the vision, but had a great quaking that fell upon them, so that they fled and hid themselves. Therefore I was left alone, and I saw this great vision, and there remained no strength in me. I want to stop right there for just a second and talk about this, because here's Daniel. And for 21 days, he's praying. For 21 days, he's ready for God to answer his request. When we get to that river that day, Daniel and some men are standing there. Nowhere in the scripture does it say these other men were praying. Nowhere in the scripture does it say that these men were doing anything but standing. And when it came time for God to deliver his answer, when it came time for God to talk, it was only Daniel that heard him. The others ran away. They hid themselves. They fled. Oh, church, may I say this morning to us, wherever we are, that if we decide that we're going to be real with God and we continue our prayer, he's going to answer our prayer. But don't stop praying. 
Don't be just standing around with the people that are praying. Pray yourselves. Get in touch with the Lord and say, God, I want to hear from you. That's the most important thing, even as we sat in our homes this morning. God, I want to hear from you. And he can talk to me wherever I'm at. I just got to be listening to him. I've just got to be communicating with him. Daniel's there and he's praying and God talks to him while the other ones fled. He was there. Verse 8 says, therefore, I was left alone by myself. And I saw this great vision. I got to see what was going on. And then he says, there remain no strength in me for my comeliness was turned into me into corruption and I retain no strength. Really, the word here means vigor. The ability to produce his comeliness, his glory, his majesty was turned into corruption because Daniel, what he thought was his best, wasn't really good compared to the Lord. Sometimes we look at our prayer life and we say, well, when I get good enough, I'll pray. When I've done enough for the Lord, I'll pray. When everything is going right in my life, I'll pray. And Daniel said, I looked at all the best that I was. I've been fasting for 21 days. I had been giving up for 21 days on things that was beneficial to me and just getting close to God. I had prayed for 21 days. And when it's all said and done, I looked at everything that I was and it wasn't that good. The Bible says in the New Testament about our good works that they're like filthy rags. That's as good as they are. They're as filthy rags. He wasn't boasting about how good he was before the Lord. He said, I had no strength. I had no ability. I had no vigor. I had no way to produce. In verse number nine, he says, yet I heard the voice of his words. I heard his voice when I had no strength for myself. When I couldn't do nothing myself, I heard his words. And when I heard the voice of his words, then I was at a deep sleep on my face, and my face was toward the ground. When I listened to his words, it put me to the ground. I realized there was nothing I could do. There was nothing I could say. I had no ability on my own. Everything that was going to happen was going to happen through the Lord. Oh, friend, today, as we're looking at our world, as we're looking at all different things that's going on, there's nothing you and I can do. We just have to get on our face before the almighty God and say, you have this. I believe you have this. I know that you have the power to take care of it. And we're seeking your will today and we're seeking your way today. We get to verse 10 and it seems like something's changed in our narrative because it says, behold, a hand touched me which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I have speak unto thee, and stand upright. For unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. All of a sudden we have a person that touches Daniel. The last time we find him, he's sleeping. I told you, I believe that he's talking to Christ, the pre-incarnate Christ. And we get to verse 10. I think there's a new person in this. This is an angel. He talks about Daniel. And he says, you're a man greatly loved. Be loved. Aren't you glad to hear that today? There's nothing in my mind that would make me think that as I'm praying and I'm seeking God, that he wouldn't say the same thing to me or the same thing to you. In fact, in John 3, 16, our most famous verse in the Bible, for God so loved the world. He loved the world. We're greatly loved. You're loved, Daniel. And I'm come to give you the message. Get off your face. Daniel stands up, but he's still trembling. And verse 12 says, Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel. For from the first day, from the first day, 21 days ago, God heard your prayer. 21 days ago, your prayer came up to him. It wasn't because it was stopped then. Look what happens. That thou didst set thine heart to understand. He heard your heart. He heard your words. He saw your heart. And to chasten thyself before God, thy words were heard. And I come here for thy words. There's one reason I'm here today. It's to give you the answer that you're looking for. To tell you the truth. But there's a reason it took me 21 days. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief priests came to help me. And I remained there with the kings of Persia. Remember, I told you this is a different person. I believe it's a different person because Jesus wouldn't have been held by the prince of Persia. 
but another angel would have been. We read this and we find Daniel and he's praying and he's asking God and he's seeking his face. And with all his heart, he's asking the Lord to answer this prayer, to give him comfort, to give him peace, to give him wisdom. And as he's doing this, God's hearing this prayer. On the first day he heard it. You may be sitting there saying, I don't know if God hears my prayers. He hears our prayers. That's obvious. But the old enemy, sometimes he wants to hinder those prayers from coming back, the answer. Why? Because if he can hinder the prayer from coming, the answer for coming to us faster than we expect, we might quit praying. If he can hinder us from getting the answer we want in our minds, he may stop us from praying. If we can think that there's no reason, there's no reason that God would answer our prayers or listen to us, then we'll stop praying. See, Satan, he wants to hinder our prayers, and he has a whole army of his own. He says, I'm going to try to do this on a spiritual side. We look at this world today, we see everything in the physical, but there's a spiritual battle going on. And that's the battle that Satan's waging. And as Daniel prayed for those days, Satan was trying to keep him from getting the answer And I believe with the hopes that he would quit praying. That he would quit serving the Lord. That he would quit doing what he needed to do. But the Lord said he sent Michael, the archangel, to come and to battle this prince of Persia. Allowing this angel to come and to speak to Daniel. To encourage him. I remember reading when I was in high school, going to a Christian school, Frank Peretti's books, This Present Darkness and Piercing the Darkness. And I'll be honest with you, I'm not a reader. It's not something I don't sit down and read novels. Some people love to read novels. I'm not a novel reader. But I read these books and there was so much excitement and so much uh, just vigor in it that I, I couldn't put them down. And the whole book, the whole premise behind the book was and I've read, it's been a while since I read it, so I may get it a little bit off, but there's a little church in a place that's basically under attack spiritually. There's not a lot of people praying. In fact, in this little church where people were attending and going through the motions, there seems to be only one person praying in the whole church, and it's under a spiritual assault. And yet this one person's prayer becomes a two person's prayer, becomes a three person's prayer. And the whole premise behind the This present darkness and piercing the darkness is the more people that pray, the more angels God sends to fight. I don't know. Maybe this is what he bases it on. As Daniel continues to pray and beseech his God, and God says, I hear your prayers. Satan, you're no longer going to keep them from getting to him. You're no longer going to hinder this from happening. And so the answer comes. In number verse 14, it says, Now I've come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. For yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words to me, I felt set my face toward the ground and I became dumb. He heard this and crippled him. He heard what was going to happen. He got the answer And when he got the answer, he fell to his face. Sometimes when we get the answer to our prayers, it's not the answer we want. Sometimes it's not the speed that we want. Verse 16 says, And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that stood before me, O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? For as for me straightway, there remain no strength in me, neither is there breath left in me. Then there came again and touched me one, like the appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. And he said, O man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be unto thee, be strong ye, yea, be strong. And he had spoken to me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak for thou hast strengthened me. He got the answer. And when he got the answer, it was not what he wanted to hear. And he fell to his face and he said, I have no strength left. I have no words to speak. I don't know what to say. 
And once again, we find what I think is the Lord Jesus, the pre-incarnate Christ, come. And he touched him. Did you notice this time the way he says it? Verse number 19, O man greatly beloved. The first time when the angel said it, he said, you are man greatly beloved. But now he says, you are greatly beloved. Fear not. Peace be unto thee. Be strong. Yea, be strong. But Lord, I'm weak. Lord, I don't have any strength. Lord, I don't have any ability. What am I supposed to do? We keep reading that verse 19. And when he had spoken to me, I was strengthened. I don't have any strength, Lord. How am I going to get that? And he said, just listen to me. We find the touch, but we also find the words. Oh, friend, today, if you're not listening to what God has to say, you can't be strengthened. If you never open your Bible, you can't be strengthened. You have to listen to the words of the Lord. Daniel says, when he spoke to me, I was strengthened. And he caught that. And he said, let my Lord speak. In other words, keep talking to me. Because the more you're talking, the stronger I'm getting. You want to get strong today? Start talking to the Lord. In fact, if you want to get strong, start listening to the Lord. Let him talk back to you. He may not talk back to you in the audible, but he's going to talk back to you through his word. He's going to talk back to you with his peace. He's going to talk back to you with his grace. Verse 20 says, Then said he, Knowest thou, therefore I come unto thee. And now I'll return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I'm gone forth, lo, the prince of Persia shall come. But, verse 21, I will show thee that which is noted in the scripture of truth. And there is none that holdeth with me these things but Michael, your prince. I'm going to show you the truth today. Daniel finds himself with the answer. And it's a bad answer. And it's a hard answer. And as he's laying on his face with no strength and no words to say, he said, I don't know what to do. And all of a sudden, he was touched by the Lord. But he wasn't just touched. He was strengthened through the words of the Lord. This morning, our prayer life should be us talking to God, but we need to listen to what he has to say. If you want to be strengthened today, you can't just have empty words or say a bunch of words. You have to really listen to what God has to say. And as you're praying and you're opening his book and you're seeing what he has for us. This morning, there's a spiritual warfare out there. And we look and we say, we have a coronavirus. We have a physical ailment going on. But there's a spiritual war. And Satan wants you and I not to pray today. He wants you and I not to listen today. He wants you and I to be afraid And with that fear to close down and to stop. We're not sitting in this building today, but we don't need to be afraid. Because God has this. Wherever we are today, we need to get in touch with the Lord and say, God, you've got this. I believe that. I want to hear from you today. I want to speak to you today. Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 10. It says, finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, and against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. And above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you may be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with the perseverance and supplication for all saints." Our prayer today is that we take on that whole armor of God, that we can fight off the wiles of the devil, and that we can stand. This morning I said that our desire today was to have a time of prayer and ask the Lord to speak to us today, to protect our world, to protect our country. So let's do that as we close. Heavenly Father, we come today to you. And Lord, we understand like Daniel that there is nothing that we can do. All we can do is trust in you. Lord, you are the one 
who is able to give wisdom to the doctors, to the researchers. You are the one that's able to bring about a cure to this virus that we see. Lord, we know there's people out there that are afraid today. And so, Lord, today I pray that you might provide them the peace and the strength that they need. Lord, that you would speak to us. And as Daniel was without strength himself, as he was laying there on his face, not knowing what to do next, Lord, you reached out and touched him, that you reached down and spoke to him. Lord, would you speak to us wherever we are right now? Would you talk to us today? Would you let us seek your word and your presence? Would you open up our hearts and minds to what you have for us? Lord, you said that we should ask and it will be given, that we shall seek and we shall find, knock and it shall be opened. So today, Lord, we ask you in the name of Jesus, your son, that you might stop this virus that's going around this world, that you might protect those that have it and heal them, that you would keep those that may be sensitive to this, that may be with a bad immune system or older, that they might not get it. That you would protect each person of the Crestview Baptist Church, but also each person out there in the world. Lord, that you would strengthen those right now that need to be strengthened. Lord, help us not to cease prayer. Help us not to be, allow Satan's hindering of the answers to come to us to keep us from praying. Help us not to give up before you've done your answering this prayer. Lord, we ask that you bless us this week. Give us wisdom as we look to what we'll do the next weeks ahead. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.